Jennifer Connelly is one of those actresses that got their start young, even younger than what you might think. She was a preteen when she landed some gigs as a child model and just 14 when she landed her first acting role in Sergio Leone's now acclaimed crime film, Once Upon a Time in America. She's one of those interesting people that have been around Hollywood pretty much their entire life, but doesn't seem like it because they seem to focus on acting itself and not the trappings that accompany it like the celebrity. That is, they're not famous for being famous. They treat acting like a job, just like any other job. For a moment though, it didn't seem as though she would pursue acting as a career. Connelly's parents were well off and she attended St. Anne's in Brooklyn, a private arts school before attending Yale to study English literature. All the while, she kept acting, appearing in movies like 1985's Phenomena, directed by Dario Argento, 1986's Seven Minutes in Heaven, and Labyrinth, where she starred with David Bowie. It's worth mentioning that she wasn't even 18 yet, yet was already being cast in lead roles in movies. Connolly pretty much skipped the supporting actress phase entirely. In 1990, she decided to transfer from Yale to Stanford and also switched majors to drama. That same year, she decided that finishing college wasn't something that she wanted to do. The movie side was going well, so why not go all in? And that's exactly what she did, dropping out and pursuing acting full time. In 1991, she starred in Career Opportunities, a rom-com that even the writer, John Hughes, ended up disliking, calling it quote-unquote cheap and vulgar. The same year, she was in The Rocketeer, which got decent reviews, but didn't do the right numbers at the box office. Frankly, none of the movies Connolly did in the 1980s and 90s did great. Almost all of them failed with critics or at the box office and oftentimes both. But there were a few gems, mainly 1995's Higher Learning, directed by John Singleton, and 1998's Dark City, directed by Alex Proyas. The first made money despite not getting great reviews, while Dark City was a sci-fi flick that has since become a cult classic. Whenever she was in a movie, critics would note how beautiful Connolly was, which provides some insight into why directors cast her. For example, David Denby, writing about 1996's Mulholland Falls in New York Magazine, wrote, quote, This footage is actually dirty. That is, it makes us feel like voyeurs when looking at it, but it's so juicefully erotic that we can hardly look away, end quote. Then Ron Howard, who co-produced 1997's Inventing the Abbots and would later direct Connolly in A Beautiful Mind, said, quote, She not only was beautiful and seductive, but gave some difficult psychological moments in the film a lot of depth and complexity. She had an extraordinary combination of talent and beauty, and I guess I stored that information in the back of my brain, end quote. In 1990, Stephen Schaefer at USA Today wrote, a bit creepily if I'm honest, quote, Anyone looking for proof that little girls do grow up fast in the movies should take a gander at curvaceous Jennifer Connelly in the hot spot. Not yet 20, Connelly has neatly managed the transition from child actress to ingenue, end quote. At least it's not as bad as what Ed Dwyer wrote about Brooke Shields in High Times when she was 12, but I digress. The early 2000s is when it all began to change for Connelly and when she, seemingly in an instant, rocketed to superstardom. Not in Waking the Dead, which performed poorly at the box office and with critics, though it did earn Connolly some praise. First, there was Requiem for a Dream. Reactions to the movie were violent, you either loved it or hated it with seemingly no middle ground, and most critics fell on the side of loving it. With James Beard and Nelly hailing it as the second best film of the 2000s, just after The Lord of the Rings. Roger Ebert gave it three and a half stars, while Peter Bradshaw, writing for The Guardian, called it, quote, a formally pleasing piece of work, if pleasing can possibly be the right word, end quote. Whatever the case, it was a powerful film and Connolly elicited plenty of praise for her role. With Elvis Mitchell, writing for the New York Times, saying, quote, Miss Connolly, too, whittled herself down to a new weight class, and it's her performance that gives the movie weight, since her fall is the most precipitous, end quote, and that, quote, Miss Connolly has never before done anything to prepare us for how good she is here, end quote. The following year, she would prove just how good she is. She starred in Ron Howard's A Beautiful Mind, a biopic about John Nash, a Nobel laureate in economics that also had schizophrenia. It was the most successful movie of her career up until that point, grossing $317 million on a $58 million budget and winning Connolly an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. She had proven that she was a serious actress. In 2003, she was in Hulk, the one with Eric Bana, which did all right, as well as House of Sand and Fog, which got decent reviews. While she's been in plenty of movies since, most haven't done well critically or commercially. A few are worth pointing out though. In 2005, she was in Dark Water, which didn't get great reviews, but did get Connolly personal praise. 
In 2006, she starred in Little Children, which got great reviews. Blood Diamond, where she acted opposite Leonardo DiCaprio, 2008 The Day the Earth Stood Still, which I enjoyed despite the movie getting terrible reviews. 2014's Noah, where she reunited with Darren Aronofsky, who directed her in Requiem for a Dream. 2017's Only the Brave, a biopic about a group of firefighters that got phenomenal reviews. Alita, Battle Angel, directed by Robert Rodriguez, a movie that I hope gets a sequel. And 2022's Top Gun, Maverick, one of the best movies of the 2020 so far. Though she doesn't have any movies coming up, she does have a TV show in production, Dark Matter, on Apple TV+. And Jennifer Connelly has been around and active since the 1980s. She's a working woman's actress. She does the role that she needs to do, does the marketing, then retreats from the spotlight until the next role comes around. While most of her movies aren't particularly great, Connelly is rarely the problem with them. She's a solid actress and is likely to remain that way well into the future.